Good morning, fourth grade. Today we're gonna to figure out if Stanley finds zero in that desert. Because as we know, yesterday he drove off and then he crashed into a hole using Mr. Sir's water truck. So now he's looking for zero. We're gonna see if he can find him somewhere. This is a little bit of a shorter chapter, so let's get through it. Chapter 36. The sun was almost directly overhead. He figured he could walk for no more than an hour, maybe two before he had to turn back. It seemed pointless. He could see there was nothing ahead of him. Nothing but emptiness. He was hot, tired, hungry, and most of all, thirsty. Maybe he should just turn around now. Maybe he'd already gone halfway and didn't know it. Then, looking around, he saw a pool of water less than 100 yards away from where he was standing. He closed his eyes and opened them to make sure he wasn't imagining it. The pool was still there. He hurried towards it. The pool hurried away from him, moving as he moved, stopping when he stopped. There wasn't any water. It was a mirage caused by the shimmering waves of heat rising off the dry ground. He kept walking. He still carried the empty stack of sunflower seeds. He didn't know if he might find something to put in it. After a while, he thought he could make the shape. Sorry, he thought he could make out the shape of the mountains through the haze. He wasn't sure if it was another kind of mirage, but the farther he walked, the clearer they became into view. Almost straight ahead of him, what he could see would look like a fist with its thumb sticking out. He didn't know how far away it was. Five miles? Fifty miles? One thing was for certain, it was more than halfway. He kept walking towards it, although he didn't know why. He knew he'd have to turn around before he got there, but every time he looked at it, it seemed to encourage him, giving him the thumbs up sign. As he continued walking, he became aware of a large object on the lake. He couldn't tell what it was, or even if it was natural or man-made. It looked like a little fake fallen tree, although it didn't seem likely that a tree would grow here. More likely, it was a ridge of, of dirt or rocks. The object, whatever it was, was not on the way to Big Thumb, but off to the right. He decided to go, he tried to decide whether to go to it or continue towards Big Thumb, or maybe just turn around. There was no point in heading towards Big Thumb, he decided. He would never make it. For all he knew, it was like chasing the moon, but he could make it to the mysterious object. He changed directions. He doubted it was anything, but the fact that it was something in the middle of all this nothing made it hard for him to pass up. He decided to make this object his halfway point, and he hoped he hadn't already gone too far. He laughed to himself when he saw what it was. It was a boat, or part of a boat anyways. It struck him as funny to see a boat in the middle of this dry, barren wasteland. But after all, he realized, this was once a lake. The boat lay upside down, half buried in the dirt. Someone may have drowned here, he thought grimly at the same spot, where he could very well die of thirst. The name of the boat had been painted on the back. The upside down red letters were peeled and faded, but Stanley could still read the name, Mary Lou. On one side of the boat, there was a pile of dirt and then a tunnel leading down below the boat. The tunnel looked big enough for a good sized animal to crawl through. He heard a noise, something stirred under the boat. It was coming out. Hey, Stanley shouted, hoping to scare it back inside. His mouth was very dry and it was very hard to shout loudly. Hey, the an thing answered weakly. Then a dark hand and an orange sleeve reached up out of the tunnel. Chapter 35. Zero's face looked like a jack-o'-lantern that had been left out too many days past Halloween, half rotten with sunken eyes and a drooping smile. Is that water, he asked. His, weak was, his voice was weak and raspy. His lips were so pale they were almost white and his tongue seemed to flop around uselessly in his mouth as he spoke, as if it kept getting in the way. It's empty, said Stanley. He stared at Zero, not quite believing that he was real. I tried to bring you the whole water truck, but he smiled sheepishly. I drove it into a hole. I can't believe you're... Me neither, said Zero. Come on, we gotta get back to camp. Zero shook his head. I'm not going back. You have to. We both have to. You want some sploosh, Zero asked. What? Zero shaded his eyes with his forearm. It's cooler under the boat, he said. Stanley watched Zero crawl back through his hole. It was a miracle he was still alive, but Stanley knew he would have to get back he would have to get him back to camp soon, even if he had to carry him. He crawled after him and was just able to squeeze his body through the hole. He never would have fit when he first came to Grand Green Lake. He'd lost a lot of weight. As he pulled himself through, his leg struck something sharp and hard. It was a shovel. For a second Stanley wondered how it got there, but then he remembered Zero had taken it with him after striking Mr. Pandansky. It was cool under the boat which was half buried in the dirt. There was enough cracks and holes in the bottom of the boat, now the roof, to provide light and ventilation. He could see the empty jars scattered about. Zero held a jar in his hand and grunted as he tried to unscrew the lid. What is it? Sploosh. His voice was strained as he worked on the jar. That's what I would call it. They were buried under the boat. 
He still couldn't get the lid off. I found 16 jars. Here, hand me the shovel. Still, he didn't have a lot of room to move. He reached behind him, grabbed the wooden end of the shovel, and reached out. And held it out to Zero, blade first. Sometimes you just have to, Zero said. Then he hit the jar against the blade of the shovel, breaking the top of the jar clean off. He quickly brought the jar to his mouth and licked the spooch off the jagged edges before it spilled. Careful, Stanley warned. Zero picked up the cracked lid and licked the spooch off that as well. Then he handed the broken jar to Stanley. Drink some. Stanley held it in his hand and stared a moment. He was afraid of the broken glass. He was also afraid of the sploosh. It looked like mud. Whatever it was, he realized, it must have been in the boat when the boat sank. That meant it was probably over 100 years old. Who knew what kind of bacteria might be living in it? It's good, said Zero, encouraging him. He wondered if Zero had heard of bacteria. He raised the jar to his mouth and carefully took a sip. It was a warm, bubbly, mushy nectar, sweet and tangy. It felt like heaven as it flowed over his dry mouth and down his parched throat. He thought it might have been some kind of fruit at some time. Perhaps peaches. Zero smiled at him. I told you it was good. Stanley didn't want to drink too much, but it was too good to resist. They passed the jar back and forth until it was empty. How many are left, he said. None, said Zero. Stanley's drop mouth dropped. Now I have to take you back, he said. I'm not digging any more holes, said Zero. They won't make you dig, Stanley promised. They'll send, probably send you a hospital like Barf Bag. Barf Bag stepped on a rattlesnake, said Zero. Stanley remembered how he had almost done the same. I guess he didn't hear the rattle. He did it on purpose, said Zero. You think? He took off his shoe and sock first. Stanley shivered as he tried to imagine it. What's Maria What? Zero concentrated hard. Maria la o I have no idea. I'll show you, said Zero. He crawled back out from under the boat. Stanley fell back outside. He had to shield his eyes from the brightness. Zero walked around the back of the boat and pointed to the upside down letters. Maria la o Stanley smiled. Mary Lou. It's the name of the boat. Mary Lou, Zero repeated, starting the letters. I thought it made y like the y sound. It does, said Stanley, but not when it's at the end of a word. Sometimes Y is a vowel, and sometimes it's a consonant. Zero suddenly groaned. He grabbed his stomach and bent over. Are you all right? Zero dropped to the ground. He laid on his side with his knees pulled to his chest. He continued to groan. Stanley watched helplessly. He wondered if it was the sploosh. He looked back towards Camp Green Lake. At least he thought it was the direction of Camp Green Lake. He wasn't entirely sure. Zero stopped moaning, and his body slowly unbent. I'm taking you back, said Stanley. Zero managed to sit up. He took several breaths. Look, I got a plan so you won't get in trouble, Stanley reassured him. Remember when I found the gold tube? Remember I gave it to X-Ray and the warden went crazy making us dig where she thought X-Ray found it? I think if I tell the warden where I really found it, she'll let us off. I'm not going back, said Zero. You've got nowhere else to go, said Stanley. Zero said nothing. You'll die out here, said Stanley. Then I'll die out here. Stanley didn't know what to do. He had come to rescue Zero and instead drank the last of his sploosh. He looked off into the distance. I want you to look at something. I'm not... I just want you to look at the, up at that mountain over there. See the one that has something sticking out of it? Yeah, I think. What does it look like to you? Does it look like anything? Zero said nothing. But as he started the mountain, his right hand slowly formed a fist. He raised his thumb. His eyes went from the mountain to his hand and then back to his thumb. So, in this chapter, we found Zero, which is wonderful. So, we found Zero, and we also kind of pulled back to some of our flashbacks. So, in our flashbacks, we talked about Miss Catherine, the teacher, and um, Sam and Mary Lou, and we kind of heard some of that today. So, this boat that they found, it had Mary Lou in the back of it. And what that tells me, because I know that Mary Lou was Sam's donkey, is that this was Sam's boat that crashed when Sam was killed. So this is the boat that they found. And the sploosh that they found inside it, he said that it might be peaches inside, right? So I think personally that, that those were Miss Catherine's peaches that she paid Sam with. And they went down in the boat with Sam and with the boat. So kind of like tying into our, our flashbacks here. So shorter chapter this week, and I will see you guys tomorrow.